Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. President DeJoya, deans of the undergraduate schools, members of the faculty, and especially new students of Georgetown, families and friends, welcome, welcome, welcome to Georgetown's 2021 New Student Welcome Ceremony. The opening prayer will be delivered by the Reverend Mark Bosco, Vice President of Mission and Ministry. Let us pray. God of holy wisdom, God of all that is luminous, at the beginning of this new semester, as we welcome new students to Georgetown, we call upon you to shower your blessings upon us. We thank you for the gift of our minds as we pursue new knowledge and research. We thank you for the gift of our hearts as we ground that knowledge in love of one another and for the world around us. Give us courage and energy, O oh Lord, to take up the work of our Georgetown community, students, professors, administrators, and chaplains. Grant us all a spirit of adventure in all that comes our way, in the people that we meet virtually and in person, in the courses that we take, in the reflections that we make. Draw us into reverence for one another in our rich diversity, mindful of the dignity of all human life and the call to pursue the cause of justice, especially among those disenfranchised in our nation. Grant us all a discerning heart that seeks the betterment of our neighbors as much as ourselves. O divine teacher, be with us in all our successes and disappointments, our joys and our sorrows. May our life together here at Georgetown transform us into women and men for others. We ask this in your holy name, amen. Students, we're here today to welcome you to your new home and to welcome your families into our community. Of course, we would prefer to be doing this all together, in person, on campus. But the past 11 months have taught us something, an invaluable lesson. Georgetown transcends the 104 acres between O Street and Reservoir Road in the District of Columbia. Georgetown is at its core two things. It's an idea and it's a community. We're here today to introduce you to that idea and then to welcome you into that community. The idea, we are a university based on a tradition of nearly 500 years of Jesuit educational excellence and here on the hilltop of 230 years of service to the nation and to the world. This ceremony is our way of communicating to you that we are committed to the tasks ahead of us, to educate the mind and the spirit of our new students, to help them find the areas of learning that will both give them joy and success in later life, to expose them to the intense excitement of original discovery, to challenge them to tackle the deep ethical, philosophical, and theological questions that each one of us must resolve for ourselves. And finally, finally, to accompany them as they discover how they can make this a better world. Admittedly, that's a heroic and rather daunting to-do list. But with 230 years of practice, we feel confident and we feel that the students should feel the same confidence of being up to that challenge. The next few years for you will be a time during which many of you will discover who you are and the course your future lives will take. 
This will happen through conversations with faculty members, during discourse and debate with other students, or in quiet moments of solitude and reflection. Our fervent desire is that Georgetown will broaden your horizons and deepen your resolve and help bring the vision of your future into your own focus. And now, as, parting, as, as a way of introducing Georgetown to you, the deans of the undergraduate schools will present their students in reverse order of the school's establishment at Georgetown. The, the students transferring to Georgetown represent 22 U.S. states and 12 other countries. The first-year students hail from five states and two other countries. We will begin with Dean Paul Almeida of the McDonough School of Business, which was established in 1957. We will then proceed to Dean Joel Hellman of the Walsh School of Foreign Service, established in 1919. Then to Interim Dean Carol Griesens of the School of Nursing and Health Studies, founded in 1903. And we will finish with Interim Dean Soika Colbert of Georgetown College, which admitted its first students in 1791. You'll see that Dean Almeida and Interim Dean Colbert will address us from their offices and their respective schools. Dean Hellman is speaking to us from the lobby of the School of Foreign Service with the bust of its founder, Father Edmund Walsh, in the background. And Dean Graysons is speaking to us from St. Mary's Hall, the home of the School of Nursing and Health Studies. As Dean of the McDonough School of Business, I'm delighted to welcome 32 students transferring into the McDonough School and two students enrolling as first years. They enter a school committed to educating ethically responsible and effective business leaders prepared in the Jesuit tradition of being women and men for others, not only to manage existing organizations, but also to create new entities that can responsibly help raise standards of living across the globe. As Dean of the Walsh School of Foreign Service, I'm pleased to welcome 27 students transferring into SFS and one student beginning as a first year this spring. In a tumultuous year for global affairs, like no other in our lifetime, our school, the oldest school of international affairs in the United States, remains faithful to the vision of its founder, Edmund A. Walsh, to provide an education grounded in theory and practice, shaped by the Jesuit ideal of service, to prepare our graduates for lives that connect people and cultures across boundaries, working for a better world. As Interim Dean of the School of Nursing and Health Studies, I'm happy to welcome five students transferring to the school. They join a community that is proudly diverse, robust, engaged with the world, and strongly marked by the Jesuit value of cura personalis, care for the whole person. For over a hundred years, through education, scholarship, and social action, the school has been a catalyst not only for health equity, but also for social justice in local communities, in the nation, and across the globe. As Interim Dean of Georgetown College, I take great pleasure in welcoming 76 students transferring to the college and seven enrolling as first year student. And in the college, they enjoy a large spectrum of opportunities offered by 26 academic departments and 12 interdisciplinary programs, generating 48 majors, 44 minors, and seven certificates. Whatever their focus, all of our new students join a two century old community shaped by a deep and abiding commitment to the Jesuit values of a liberal arts education centered on critical thinking and the expression of complex ideas. Thank you, deans. New students, you enter this community as heirs to generations of accomplished Georgetown alumni who have in every walk of life and for over two centuries worked as women and men for others to transform the nation and indeed the whole world. Since 1814, 
Over 150 of our alumni have been members of the United States Congress, starting with our first student, William Gaston, after whom Gaston Hall is named, from North Carolina. In the 117th Congress, Georgetown alumni will occupy eight seats in the U.S. Senate, including a member who was recently elected just days ago, John Ossoff, a 2009 graduate. He will become the youngest member of the Senate. In addition to the senators, we have 20 seats in the House of Representatives. In addition, there are 437 congressional staff members who are alumni. 28 of them are serving as chief of staff to a member. Hoyas, inspired to be men and women for others, are committed to serve those less fortunate than ourselves. Over 800 of our alumni have served in the Peace Corps, and more than 250 have joined Teach for America. Current alumni also include a, a former U.S. National Security Advisor and the Commandant of the U.S. Marine Corps. In addition, we enjoy among our ranks the, the first United States Global AIDS Coordinator. For Hoyas, making the world a better place isn't just a slogan or a motto or a tagline. It's what we do. But we believe firmly that to do good, you have to be good at what you do. And we are. For, for example, Hoya filmmakers win Sundance Film Festival prizes routinely. And our thespians have won Tony Awards on Broadway, including for Best Play and, and Best Director. We might even claim that Georgetown was the place that a certain star, Bradley Cooper, was born. In the spring of your senior year, we confidently expect that we will reconvene, but this time we'll be on campus, and we will welcome you and your families back to senior convocation, in a way your send-off party. One measure of your success between now and then will be the extent to which you have prepared yourselves to inherit this proud tradition of excellence and leadership exemplified by Georgetown alumni. In ways that are now hard to anticipate, your histories will intersect and intertwine with Georgetown's throughout your entire life. And one way or another, large or small, your futures will be shaped by the adventure you begin today, by your call to be Georgetown's sons and daughters, to be Georgetown in and of the world, and for the world. I've spoken to you as a representative of the faculty, and we've even invited a current member of the student body to also welcome you and to offer you some words of wisdom on behalf of your new peers. Now is the part when you should stop pretending to listen and really start listening in earnest. Our student speaker will be introduced by Niccolo Ferretti of New York, School of Foreign Service, class of 2021, and president of the Georgetown University Student Association. Nico. Thank you, Provost Groves. Hansa Maria from Pakistan is currently a senior at SFS Qatar, pursuing a Bachelor of Science in Foreign Service. A passion advocate for people with disabilities, she has organized and spoken at conferences on inclusion and inclusive policy. She is particularly concerned with the urgent need to design accessible communities that foster inclusivity. In her sophomore year, she received a Qatar National Research Fund grant that enabled her to investigate the barriers impacting the inclusion of people with disabilities in the Qatari workforce. Her honors thesis focuses on the evolution of the disability rights movement in post-colonial South Asia. 
At Georgetown, Kanza leads various clubs, including the Georgetown Debating Union and the South Asian Society. She also works with the U.S. Embassy in Qatar to develop a conversation on questions of diversity, inclusivity, and regeneration. In November 2020, she was awarded the highly competitive and prestigious Rhodes Scholarship. As Rhodes Scholar at Oxford, Kanza will continue her academic and advocacy work at the intersection of public policy and social intervention. After Oxford, she hopes to continue this focus supporting the disability community in Pakistan. Kanza? My last year of high school was one of the hardest times of my life. I remember I was applying to all these colleges and filling out all these financial aid applications, hoping, praying, and dreaming that I would get into my dream colleges. And yet, there was this feeling that I wasn't quite making it. I remember when I filled out my Georgetown application, I wasn't expecting a lot. And yet, this one day, I was standing in the middle of my kitchen, putting some strawberries into the freezer, done with life as high school students are by the time March comes along. And I remember getting this phone call. I didn't want to answer that phone call because I thought it would be another one of my debate teammates asking me to participate in a competition or help with recruitment of new members. I don't know what made me answer that phone. And on the other end was David. He had interviewed me when I applied to Georgetown. And now he was telling me that I had made it. I remember that feeling as if I was in that moment right now. And I know I felt relieved. I felt excited and I felt overjoyed. And I'm sure you're feeling all of those mo moments and you're feeling all of those feelings. But before you do anything else, I want you to sit back and relish in the fact that you've gotten into Georgetown. You've made it as far as today. So congratulations. Getting into Georgetown is no small feat. It takes time, it takes effort, it takes commitment. I don't know what brought you here today. And I don't know where you'll go from here. But I want you to know that wherever it is that you will end up going, Georgetown will make your journey worth it. You will learn to procrastinate and yet be able to submit your deadlines on time. You will be able to party with your friends and then cry about assignments and cry about everything else life is throwing at you. But those experiences will definitely be worth it. And it will be some of the most transformative experience of your life. When I left my home as an international student, there was a lot of fear involved there was a lot of anxiety involved. There was a lot of excitement involved because I was leaving my home in Pakistan for the first time. And I'm also blind. So there was also this element of how will I be able to live independently? How will I be able to figure out things? But when I went to Georgetown, I realized that I broke a lot of those stereotypes that I had about myself that I had internalized. I learned my own successes were worth more than I gave them credit for. And I learned that my weaknesses only served to define my successes even more and made me more competent to deal with any challenges that I got. At Georgetown, Qatar, I was exposed to perspectives that I knew nothing about. There were all these people from various parts of the world with different backgrounds, different ideologies, and different goals. And I think each and every one of them contributed to my journey and brought me to where I am today. I applied to the Rhodes Scholarship and got it because the Rhodes experience is a lot more than just getting good grades and getting a stellar GPA. It's about being what Georgetown teaches you, men and women for others. It's about learning that your society needs a contribution from you, regardless of what that contribution is 
where it comes from and what your values are. Georgetown will teach you that you have a part to play in making society evolve. You have a part to play in determining your own success. They will make you educate your entire being, whether that is by participating in service learning trips or whether that is debating or playing football, whatever you're interested in and passionate about. If you had your laptop muted all this time, now is the time to unmute and pay attention. Because I want to leave you with three final things. Remember to try for each and every opportunity you see, regardless of whether you think you won't get it or that you don't have enough capacity to get it. Because out of the thousand opportunities you apply for, you will end up getting a hundred of them. And they will transform you in many ways that you did not even imagine. Whether that is those rejections or acceptances or fights with teammates, staying up late at night to finish various projects, it's all going to take you to where you need to be. So my first advice is apply for everything you're interested in. Don't say no to different experiences and different opportunities. My second advice is be open to the experiences of those around you. Expand your horizons. Don't have conversations only with those who look like you and act like you. Georgetown is a very multicultural environment. You will meet people who you absolutely disagree with and who you absolutely agree with. So try to expose yourself to both of those perspectives and all of those ideologies. And my last advice for you in coming Hoyas is that oh, be open to change. Be open to transformation. Be open to learning and growing. Going to your professors with five drafts, learning from your peers in side conversations in the cafeteria, and most of all, reflecting on yourself where you want to be, where you are today, and what your journey has already taught you. Congratulations, Hoyas, and welcome to Georgetown. Thank you, Kanza. Together with our colleagues in the other schools of the main campus and on the law and medical campuses, we continue in the tradition of nearly 500 years of Jesuit educational excellence. To give you a sense of that tradition, to help you understand Georgetown's place in that tradition, it's my pleasure to introduce the secretary of the university, Ms. Marie Matson, who speaks to us from Carroll Parlor in Healy Hall, which houses some of the university's most outstanding works of art. On January 23rd, 1789, our founder, the Most Reverend John Carroll of the Society of Jesus, first Archbishop of Baltimore and first Catholic Bishop in the United States, took legal possession of the land known as the Georgetown Hilltop and which we now call Dahlgren Quadrangle. We mark that as the university's founding date. In 1791, our first student arrived, the future North Carolina Congressman and Chief Justice of the North Carolina Supreme Court, William Gaston. But our first bachelor degrees were not awarded until 1817. In 1815, with student enrollment passing the 100 mark, Georgetown had begun to fulfill John Carroll's vision of a Georgetown that was a genuinely national college, a vision that, as you have just heard, has expanded not only to the nation, but to the globe. Accordingly, then President Reverend John Grassi of the Society of Jesus asked now Congressman Gaston to present a petition for a federal charter, a document that still today sanctions this university's academic enterprise. Georgetown's charter, the first federal charter in the history of the Republic, 
has the additional distinction of having been signed by President James Madison, the father of the United States Constitution. It is our venerable custom to initiate academic ceremonies with a reading of that charter. An act concerning the College of Georgetown in the District of Columbia. Be it enacted by the Senate and the House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled, that it shall and may be lawful for such persons as now are, or from time to time may be, the president and directors of the College of Georgetown within the District of Columbia, to admit any of the students belonging to said college or other persons meriting academical honors to any degree in the faculties, arts, sciences, and liberal professions to which persons are usually admitted in other colleges and universities of the United States, and to ensure in an appropriate form the diplomas or certificates which may be requisite to testify to the admission of such degree. Signed, Langdon Chivas, Speaker of the House of Representatives, John Gaillard, President Pro Temporary of the Senate, approved March 1st, 1815, James Madison, President of the United States. Thank you, Madam Secretary. We come now to the heart of today's ceremony. Your induction into the university by your taking the honor pledge. Universities are places of truth. As members of the university community, we commit ourselves to be truthful in all that we say and in all that we write. So we ask you now to pledge your acceptance of this commitment. The Honor Pledge will be introduced by Professor Catherine Olesko who is the chair of the main campus executive faculty. And it will be led by student members of the Honor Council. Professor Olesko speaks to you from the Constitution Room in Healy Hall. By entering Georgetown University, you become a part of the search for new truths, a noble endeavor that's been associated with universities since their first appearance in the historical record in the early 12th century. In academia, that search for truth is a community exercise. Your evidence will be analyzed by your peers and professors. Your methods will be scrutinized by your peers and professors. Your findings will be criticized by your peers and professors. From weekly problem sets to the senior theses, I hope you undertake as your capstone intellectual experience at Georgetown that will define you in ways you can only now imagine. Your work will be examined by others to determine if it can be trusted. Any genuinely truth-bound society has to depend upon everyone adopting those standards. I stand before you today in the academic regalia that signifies a commitment to those standards of academic inquiry and trust. It's now your turn, as you begin the life of mind in a university setting, to commit yourself to those standards to embark upon that journey to truth that begins with the honor code you will now pledge to uphold. You will find the words to the honor pledge on the last page of your program. We ask that you repeat aloud after us each phrase of the honor pledge, and we ask those watching with you to act as witnesses to your pledge. In pursuit of the high ideals and rigorous standards of academic life, I commit myself to respect and uphold the Georgetown University honor system, to be honest in any academic endeavor. And to conduct myself honorably as a responsible member of the Georgetown community as we live and work together. Having taken the honor pledge, you have now become one with us in the ancient and honorable community of scholars. Congratulations to you.
And now it is my distinct honor and privilege to invite President DeJoya to address you, the newest members of our community. The president speaks from the Hall of Cardinals in the president's office suite in Healy Hall. The room is so named because of the portraits of Jesuit cardinals around the room. You will see in the background the university mace. It is a privilege to share this special moment in your lives and in the lives of your families to be together as we recognize this rite of passage into the academy. There is nothing quite like this moment. And I wish to thank the parents and grandparents, families and caregivers. We're humbled in the trust you have placed in us and we are grateful. We are thrilled to have the opportunity to accompany your young people on this next stage of their journeys. We begin virtually, but the work that we begin together is not new. For a millennium, universities, our purpose and our values have been animated by three elements. We support the formation of young people. We support the inquiry, the scholarship and research of our faculty. And we as institutions contribute to the common good of the communities in which we participate. These three elements, formation, inquiry, common good, are mutually reinforcing and inextricably linked. There is no greater manifestation of our commitment to our mission as a university than this gathering with you as a community. Coming together today, you begin a new phase of your personal journey. We build upon everything, your parents and caregivers, your teachers and coaches, your churches, mosques, synagogues, and sacred spaces for worship everything they helped bring forth within you. You continue a journey of self-discovery, one that is enabling you to become the person that you are called to be, to become the person that only you can be. In our tradition of learning, we call this formation, and we recognize that we are asked to play a role in each of your lives as you continue this work. What is distinctive within a university community is the way in which our work centers around knowledge, the pursuit, exploration, discovery, construction, interpretation, and the sharing of knowledge. We believe this work of knowing deepens each of our journeys of formation. The deepest conviction in the work of formation is that each of us can attain our own sense of authenticity through a rigorous process of self-interrogation. Each of us can attain a self-possession, a self-awareness of the conditions that enable each of us to be our most unique and authentic self. We seek to secure an interior freedom that can sustain this work of formation. Formation is guided within the university by the practice of inquiry. The members of our faculty will become very important people in your lives. They've chosen as their life's work the practice of inquiry. There's a joyful restlessness an unrelenting pursuit for the next insight, each step bringing us all closer to a grasp of the truth. Our faculty are among the very best in the world, and they are here to accompany you on this next stage in each of your personal journeys. Moments ago, you pledged to commit to our honor code Embedded in that code is the idea of the disinterested pursuit of truth.
disinterested, not uninterested, but disinterested, open to wherever the pursuit of truth may lead. Truth, this word matters in a university. Often contested, always challenged, difficult to define. The deepest conviction in the practice of inquiry is that we have the capacity to discover truth. No other institution is so intentionally created for the purpose of establishing the conditions for truth than the university. Now, how you embrace this work matters. Our world desperately needs your dreams, your engagement, your inquiry. Ultimately, what we need is your knowledge of self, of our world, of our responsibilities for one another, and of what is required of us if we are to address the challenges of climate, of violence, of inequality, of justice. There is a good we can achieve together that we could never hope to achieve alone. We call this work pursuing the common good. You will have an opportunity and responsibility to contribute to this work. We know that as far as we may have come, we need to expect more of ourselves, of each other, of our systems and institutions. Too many are still left behind. We need to care more for our common home. Too many are lost to acts of violence. Borders across our world, all drawn by people just like us, are not enabling us to care for all of our people. We have not reconciled ourselves with the actions of our forebearers. Over the past year and in recent days, new fractures have been revealed to us. New urgency has been brought to bear in the promotion of justice and equity. Different forces have converged to challenge, disrupt, even destroy some of our institutions. And the work we face is clear. We need to build new structures, establish new norms, find deeper ways of caring for one another. All of this takes place within a community shaped by a tradition, one of the greatest traditions of learning the world has ever seen. This is a gift to us from the Jesuit order, a tradition that asks us to presuppose the very best in one another. And in so doing, we will find the very best in ourselves. As a university community, our purpose is to embrace this moment and together to pursue the common good. Never has it been more urgent for us as a community, as a nation, as a global community to contribute to this work. Never has it been more important for us to embrace a commitment to strengthen our civic culture. Never have we had a greater opportunity and responsibility to respond to the demands of our time in ways that can enable us to realize the full promise of all of our people. As a global family, we have great work to do to imagine anew how we can better care for one another and how together we can better address the challenges that confront us. This is the work of universities. This is our work. There is no moment in your lives quite like this one. You are taking the next steps on the most extraordinary journey together, joined by some of the most wonderful people in the world, connected now to one another forever by virtue of your membership in this community. We are honored to share this moment with you and we are filled with hope, 
hopeful for the discoveries you will make, the experiences you will share, the dreams that you bring. Hopeful, most of all, for your promise, for the kind of people you will become here with us at Georgetown. Welcome to Georgetown. Thank you, President DeJoya. The convocation will conclude with the benediction offered by Rabbi Rachel Gartner, Director of Jewish Life. The benediction will be followed by the alma mater, performed by members of the convocation choir and orchestra. We thank them, all of them, for their gift of today's music, especially Zoe Corrigan of the McDonough School of Business 22 for her technical assistance. Though the music might be new to you, we hope that you all will try to follow along with the words in your program. Remember, as we conclude this first shared experience, that although far apart, we all sing with one voice, one spirit, sons and daughters of Georgetown forever. Shalom. At this momentous moment in the life of our Georgetown community, words of Torah rise up for me. Vayomer Adonai el Avraham lech lecha merzecha umemladetecha mi beit avicha el haaretz asher arecha. And God said to Avraham, "Go forth from your home." and from the house of your parents to the place that I will show you. Now, for many of you, you haven't left your homes, but as Provost Groves reminds us, Georgetown transcends the 104 acres between O Street and Reservoir Road here in DC. At core, we're at an idea and a community. And we came together today to introduce you to that idea and welcome you to that community. And in true Georgetown fashion, we seal our welcome with a prayer. Dear God, as you bless Abraham and Sarah on their journey, so bless us as we embark on this new semester. As Sarah and Abraham and Hagar and Ishmael and Isaac opened wide their tents to welcome fully all who came their way. May we open our hearts and our Georgetown home to this incoming class. And may they feel within their hearts the sincerity of our welcome and the depth of our joy at their arrival. Whatever our backgrounds, whatever our beliefs, we now share this home and we are one family forever. As Sarah and Hagar and Avraham uncovered wellsprings of water as they made their way through the parched desert terrain, so too in these difficult times may we find sustenance when we encounter difficulties along our journey. At this time when our nation stands at so many crossroads and we all thirst for truth and for kindness, for courage and for compassion, help us draw strength from the well of our common humanity and guide us along paths of peace. This semester, as we study and grow and think and feel and pray and act together as a Georgetown community, fortify us, dear God, to seek truth and to speak truth, to raise one another up, to encourage one another and to celebrate one another in all our spectacular diversity as together we strive to discern and to pursue the common good. God, extend your blessing to our incoming students, to their families, and to the entire Georgetown community. As it says in your holy Torah, Ba'avarechecha ve'yevrecha and I will bless you, and you shall be a blessing. Amen.